Hey guys, Nathan from Modern Rifleman here, and today we're going to look at the new Turbo 5.56 millimeter suppressor from YHM. As always, this guy was just sent over to us by the folks at Silencer Shop, and I was really excited to get it in. If you remember back earlier this year around Shot Show, the Turbo made quite a stir because, mainly because of the pricing. Uh, with an MSRP of $489, it's one of the most affordable rifle suppressor offerings on the market right now. Um, what's even better about that is that's just the MSRP. Um, street price is a good bit lower than that, and I've seen it at certain powered by dealers on silencershop.com for as low as $399. That's totally unheard of for, some, for a silencer that really offers near flagship level performance. Um, the other thing about that that makes it so remarkable is that you really don't sacrifice anything in terms of build quality by going with this more affordable suppressor. Almost the entire can is made of 17-4 stainless steel. The only exceptions to that would be really the, the blast baffle which is um, Inconel, a slightly more dense, a slightly tougher alloy, uh, but that, that's really it. And, and it is a reinforced blast baffle, so uh, no concerns there in terms of durability at all. The other interesting thing about this design, as opposed to many of the others that are out there, is that it is tubeless. You're starting to see this a lot more in the industry. Uh, YHM's done it with their Nitro. You've seen it with the SIG suppressors. You've seen it with the new Q um, suppressors, and then some of the things that Silencer Co. offer um, also are tubeless. The nice thing about tubal suppressors is one, I don't think you lose a whole lot of durability by going with this, this kind of design. YHM rates this, uh, the turbo for a 10 and a half inch barrel on 5.56, so uh, I think that's more than reasonable. Certainly if you go with some of the super, super rugged 5.56 suppressors, you can get it down to a, a 7 and a half inch barrel, but quite honestly I don't think most of us plan on ever running a barrel that short. Um, it's kind of unpleasant. So 10.5 inches is a is a is a, a perfect perfect spot for the uh, for the turbo to, to land. But go, moving on with the, the the tubeless design, the one thing that it, it helps here is that it keeps the turbo extremely light. The suppressor alone is 12.9 ounces. So on the on the very very much on the lower end of the uh, the weight spectrum for a 556 suppressor when you add one of the mounts which I'll show you in a minute you add an, uh, another approximately four ounces or a, a little bit less so the overall weight is 16.9 ounces with the mount and the suppressor certainly I would say that's that's on the lower end of, of the of the 556 or the rifle uh, suppressor weight uh, hierarchy but that being said, it, it's not. It, I think there are some opportunities for YHM to lighten up those mounts a little bit, but but not. It's it's not bad, and it's certainly lighter than than most of the suppressors I'm used to using. So I'm glad to see the market's heading in a lighter direction. Interestingly, even though it's fairly light, the turbo is a little bit wider than your average 5.56 suppressor. While most in the market are an inch and a half in diameter. The turbo is 1.5625 inches in diameter. So just a hair over that 1.5 inch standard that seems to kind of seems to be so common. What that means is, well, a couple things. One, it means there's greater internal diameter, but that internal diameter is also enhanced by the fact that there's no outer tube. So you've got no outer tube. The walls of this of this suppressor are really just the walls of the baffles. So, a, th a, a, thinner, um, a thinner wall, while it's not really losing a whole lot of durability, means you've got more internal diameter to work with in this already larger diameter suppressor. While that helps performance, I found that usually the length of a suppressor has more to do with, with absolute meter readings and stuff, especially when you start measuring um, near the muzzle. It does seem to help with back pressure, and as far as I can tell, from all the suppressors I've tested, which 
Uh, the 556 five, five, they lag a little bit behind, but we've tested a lot of suppressors here, and this has got to be one of the lowest back pressure 5.56 uh, millimeter suppressors that I've tried to date. I mean, it really is enjoyable to, enjoyable to shoot. Um, moving on though, uh, the length of the the length of the turbo is on the shorter end of the spectrum as well. From top to bottom here, we're looking at a six and three eighths inch suppressor. And for comparison's sake, I'm going to bring up my this is my Specwar 556, which is generally a it's kind of an average size uh, 556 suppressor. And you can see that the turbo over here in my left hand is almost an inch shorter than that. Specwar. So it's shorter, it's lighter, slightly larger diameter, um, but it's a solid performer. And so let's get into this into the, the mounts a little bit before we move on. I've got the Phantom, the brand new Phantom style brake uh, attached to my ten and a half inch barreled. SBR here, kind of a Mark 18 work in progress. Now, why Chim has used these this mounting system for their suppressors for as long as I can remember. I mean, it's it's been highly successful for them. If you you think to some of these other companies in the market that that have run through mounting systems like crazy, why Chim has really been using the same one from the get go. Now, don't kind of I will say ignore the timing on this break. I don't my my shims weren't looking all that all that great. So uh, it didn't matter though when I had the the suppressor mounted up. So ignore that for a moment. But also it's worth noting that the the turbo ships with YHM's newly designed muzzle brake. I don't know about you, but I think that looks a whole heck of a lot better than the old aggressively styled uh, YHM parts. And I'm glad to see YHM moving in a, even as they've said to, to me at, at both NRA and uh, the, the sh at SHOT Show, that it's, it's a more mature direction. I mean, I tend to agree. So I'm glad to see that this is, this, this muscle brake not only looks good um, and provi provides a, a secure mounting interface for the suppressor, it also performs really well. And you'll get a chance to see that in the video here uh, shortly. <laughs> On a 10 and a half inch a, a barrel like this, it's actually kind of unpleasant. <laughs> A lot of concussion, but you'll see that it, it really it really does keep that barrel flat while I'm shooting it. As you can see on the back of the suppressor here, you've got ratcheting grooves or teeth, and those match up with this collar on the mount. This collar is spring loaded. I'm not going to be able to depress it very well here while I'm holding the rifle because it is a rather heavy spring. But it's spring loaded and the teeth on this engage the teeth on the suppressor. And then you've got these coarse threads at the front, so you kind of just twist the suppressor on and then let it ratchet into place. So I'm gonna try not to drop everything here. But it's literally it's just this simple. And then once you reach that final stop, just leave it. One of the tendencies I, or something that I tended to do when I first uh, got this guy from Silencer Shop is I really wanted to snug that, that can onto the mount. And what I found was when I tried to force the, it felt like when I, when I put the, the turbo onto the mount that there was a little bit more that I could twist it beyond that last click. But when I did that, I kind of got it stuck into a half click situation. And after letting it sit there for a little bit, I'm not sure what it was, but it was very difficult to get off. I had to use a, a rubber mallet to get my front, hold the can and give my front side a, a, a few whacks of the rubber mallet in order to get the thing to break loose. I've noticed now that I've used it, that I can't even get it that far, so I think the carbon buildup inside the suppressor and on the mount has prevented me from, from over tightening it. Um, so that's nice, but definitely a word of caution. Um, if you're going to be purchasing the turbo that or any, really any of the other YHM uh, Phantom QD style suppressors that once you get to that last full click 
just leave it there. The suppressor is not going to come off. You might have a little bit of rotational movement uh, when you grab the suppressor and twist it, but overall, it's still secure. It doesn't wobble, so a baffle strike is not going to happen, and it's not going to come off. Removing the suppressor again, then is just as easy as untwisting it, and it comes right off. It doesn't. It really doesn't get any easier than that. So I'm going to pop this guy back on, and we'll roll into some shooting video, and then we'll come back with the to wrap things up. Alright, so now that we've had a chance to go over the features of this turbo and roll in some of the shooting video, um, I hope you can see that it is a fantastic performer. Um, I know it's a little bit difficult when you're, when you're trying to watch a suppressor on YouTube to, to get a good feel for how it performs, uh, but I hope you can see that one, it sounds great, but two, it has extremely low back pressure. This, this, like, I, like I mentioned in the opening, this is one of the most pleasant uh, 5.56 millimeter cans that I've ever used and um, that even goes for like my own spec war that I that I enjoy the, the bolt speed seemed to be well well within reason which I kind of had issues with with some of the other uh, suppressors that are, that are higher back pressure designs I wasn't getting a whole lot of gas in the face I'm not sure if you could see that in the video at all I do use um, I don't know if you can see it here, but yeah, probably can. I do use a little bit of silicone there at the back of my charging handle, but even so, with a higher back pressure suppressor, um, I still get quite a bit of gas in the face. Uh, so that really wasn't the case with this turbo, so I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Obviously, you got a chance to see that uh, new muzzle brake. Um, there, I mean, it was a flamethrower every round. So. A little bit too much concussion under that uh, enclosed uh, shooting bench area for me. Uh, I would probably run a flash hider on this particular rifle, but the brake works really well. There's no doubt about that. So, I think that pretty well covers it. And all, I highly recommend the, the Turbo. I think that even though it's priced very, very well, I mean, it's, let's, let's, I don't want to call it cheap because it's not a cheap can, but it, from a pricing standpoint, it is cheap. And uh, I, you don't really sacrifice anything, guys. I mean, like, I really, really, really like this suppressor. If you have any questions about it, be sure to post those in the comments. Uh, as always, be sure to click the link in the description to see the full written review of the Turbo. There you'll also find higher resolution photos, close-ups, so on and so forth, um, that, that, that just don't quite work with this particular format. So definitely uh, be sure to check that out. Um, 
Beyond that, if you like this video, give it a like, and be sure to subscribe to the channel so I can bring you guys more, more of this content in the future. Thanks for watching.